today we're going to be talking about five reasons why your street photography sucks. Let's get into it. I'm no expert, I won't lie. I've only, I've only been shooting street for a couple of years, but I've been doing it long enough and I've shot enough rolls of film and I've taken enough photos to know that when I do these things, because I am so guilty of doing all these things, I know I'm gonna get some shitty results. If I'm doing them, chances are plenty of you guys are also doing them as well. I'm gonna take you through a photo walk that I did um, about a week or so ago. So reason number one, that you're getting shitty results on the street is that you're not taking warm-up shots. Like here's a couple, I took a photo of them because they were wearing matching scarves, but really boring, nothing interesting. Here, this would have been actually kind of interesting, but I got, she was out of focus. So here, kids out of focus, rushing it, um, you know, wasn't calm, wasn't, ugh. I just I just whipped the camera up and snapped it anyway, missed focus twice. I forced myself to do these and take these crap shots so then I feel comfortable enough to get into the right situations and get those good shots. Reason number two, not paying attention to the little details. Usually I shoot wide open, but I knew this shot here would you know would not work as well had it been wide open. So I was shooting with the 50 mil f1.8. If I shot with an f1.8, then the girl on his right, you know, his girlfriend, you know, would not have been as in focus as she is now. She would have been, you know, maybe slightly out of focus. And that is not, it just would not have worked because clearly the subject in this photo is, yes, the guy with a very interesting expression, but also his girlfriend. So yeah, I stopped down to maybe f4. I can't really remember. Those little details, make all the difference. Get your phone out, follow us on Instagram, hit subscribe if you have not already. You know, is the subject against the backdrop that you want it to be against? Is the expression that you're looking for, is that there? Sometimes the way you frame it, you're cropping off their legs. You know, you're cropping off vital parts of the story that really make a big difference. Bloody hell, mate. Reason number three, this reason just comes with practice and really understanding and really getting to grips with your environment. So reason number three, while your photos suck on the street, is that you're not anticipating the action. A lot of street photography, a lot of the best street photography that I make is preempting, looking two or three steps ahead of what's gonna happen. So for example here, really nice. that white. I ran over to this girl because she was well dressed. I really liked the look of her shoes. You know, her shoes matched the, the benches on the bus stop. In my experience, I know that if people are dressed up and they are on their own, chances are they're on their way to a day, they're on their way to something special. No one just gets dressed up. And usually if they're just sitting down doing nothing, chances are they're waiting for someone. If they're dressed up nicely and just sitting on their own, they're not there to be a tourist attraction, they're there waiting for someone. And lo and behold, I was lucky enough and that's exactly what happened. Her boyfriend came and I got the moment where they met and I just really like this photo. It's just really, really nice. Um, the way that she has a hand up um, as if to say, uh-uh, you're not off the hook. He obviously, Maybe it was a bit late. Um, yeah, just a really nice moment there. A strong contender for the couples project, if you guys are, that's a project I'm working on. Reason number four, you're not taking multiple shots of places that you can see potential in and sort of waiting for the best outcome. A lot of the times I'll just take one shot, but I know if I just took another shot and you know did it a bit better, I, you know, and just reframed a bit better or wait for a slightly better bit of light, then I know I would get far better results. But a lot of the times I will just take the shot and to avoid, I don't know, to avoid a confrontation, to avoid being caught, I'll just take the shot, sort of move it along. So 
here is a perfect example of why you should take multiple shots if you know that there's great potential in that spot. This girl, she had really nice curly hair. The light was, you know, was perfect. Golden hour light on her. There's a beautiful, harsh um, highlight outlining her. It, it looks so cinematic. And the building from behind me was reflecting and giving her a nice bit of fill. So I was getting the detail there. I, you know, I rushed this shot and obviously she's out of focus. And I thought to myself, you know, there's so many moving objects, you know, she's about to cross the road. You know, a, you know, if I wasn't comfortable, I would have thought to myself, okay, let's just move on. You know, hopefully that turns out. But no, I thought to myself, we can do better. I can do better. Um, I waited to get better focus. This is bl it's blurry. It was it wasn't focused, but it's a bit blurry because I think um, you know just scanning error. You know, so I took another photo. This time it was in focus, but this time the bloody um, the bloody bus was blocking the light. So I was like, oh no, that's not what I want. Even though that is a nice photo in its own right, but I wanted that crazy beautiful cinematic light. I waited again, and this time she whipped out um, some nail lip gloss or something so it looked even more interesting thankfully now the bus moved out of the way she was applying the lip gloss and it just looked so much better i've got that cinematic light you know the beautiful harsh highlight outline nice bit of fill light coming in you know to have the confidence and to have the patience just to stand your ground stay put stay calm and get a better shot my weapon of choice for the day was the canon a1 the 50mm f1.8 and Portra 160. And reason number five, if you were to forget all the other reasons, this would be the one key reason the one key takeaway that I would want you guys to sort of grasp and remember and take with you going forward is all in my head. That is the main reason why your street photography photos suck. It's because you are convincing yourself that your photos suck. But even before you take the camera to your face that your photos are gonna be crap, you're already convincing yourself that people are looking at you, people care that you've got your camera in your hand. I think this all the time. I've been doing, I've shot literally hundreds of rolls of film, but if I take any time off of shooting on the street, even for like a week, I, I get scared. I honestly get really scared. You know, I feel like I'm doing something illegal. And I know that it's not because of an, in, an inability to take photos. I, I can take photos, but it's just that inner anxiety in my head that I am not dealing with. That's stopping me from taking good photos. You know, there'll be plenty of times where I'll see you know, a really interesting subject, you know, maybe a, a woman with a really nice dress and beautiful makeup and beautiful hair. She looks really, really interesting or there's some really interesting light and there are two people having a really, you know, animated conversation. I'll see all these good photos, but I'll still be too afraid to, to pull the trigger because I haven't dealt with the anxieties in my head. So how do I cope with that? Basically, you need to come up with a routine, a repeatable routine that silences that inner anxiety in your head and gets you feeling calm and gets you into that flow state. I would bring my camera up to my face and point it at someone and not even take the photo. And I judge them from their reaction, seeing how they feel, how they react, even, through, even if they turn away, even if they try to dodge you know, my line of sight. You know, if, I, if I'm feeling really, really anxious and really, really nervous as I did on that day, I will take photos of the most bland mundane shit even if it's blurry i don't care bring that camera to my face point it at someone and hit that button if i do that enough times i know i will put myself into a state a very calm state into a state that's comfortable enough to get into spots where i know i'm going to get good shots and lastly a bonus little tip the reason why your street photography sucks is because maybe you just haven't realized that most of street photography that you will ever shoot will suck. And you don't let yourself enough time to get through all the shitty photos and then eventually you'll get to the good ones. Every single street photographer who's ever shot street photography, every master of photography, every magnum photographer, 
Joe Greer, <laughs> literally everyone takes bad photos. And understanding that is completely fine, then you'll start getting to the good stuff. Um, and thank you to everyone who watched the last video on Colin. Yeah, absolutely loved the feedback. It, was, um, it meant a lot to him and it really meant a lot to me to see how you guys um, responded to it and you know, how a lot of you wanted to see more of that, which is really promising, <clears throat> really reassuring because as I said, I want to tell more stories, less gear. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Dame Photo. Subscribe if you have not already. Why haven't you? Why haven't you subscribed? What? And with all that said and done, boys and girls, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.